Greetings, fellow makers. Welcome down to my shop. I'm Bill, and today I'm gonna show you how you can craft your very own hand cannon from Destiny using EVA foam. This is part one of a build series, doing all of the fabrication all the way up until paint. But wait, there's more. This is a collaboration with our pal, Andrew DFT. We each made our own Destiny hand cannon. I made mine from EVA foam and he made his from styrofoam. In fact, Andrew has his own video showing how he made his gun over on his channel and you should totally go watch that right now or right after you watch this video. He has his own particular style using very cheap insulation foam and incredibly basic tools. His video is fantastic and you should go check it out. While you're there, you ought to give him a subscription because A, he's a fantastic guy, a really good maker, and has a lot to share about his particular fabrication style. Also, he's gonna be painting the gun that I made. We'll be doing our painting videos next week, so if you subscribe to him now, you'll know when his painting video comes out and you'll get to see how he finishes my gun. Okay, let's get on with my build. For my hand cannon, my wonderful wife, Brittany, picked out the newer Rise of Iron design and drew up the blueprint for me to use. If you'd like to follow along, you can download a free copy of that blueprint from our website linked below. Most of this hand cannon was built around a PVC pipe barrel, so I used that as my starting point. I marked off how long it needed to be and where some of the details would be cut in. Those details were roughed out using the bandsaw and then cleaned up using a sanding stick. The hole through the side of the barrel was punched out using the routing bit on my rotary tool and then finished off with a craft knife and needle files. The remaining details on the barrel were made from strips of two millimeter thick EVA foam. These strips were cut to width and then glued around the circumference of the PVC pipe. Next, I got to work on the cylinder. I stacked several pieces of EVA foam together to get the full length of the cylinder. This is foam from TNT Cosplay Supply and it has no texture on either side, making it ideal for laminating together in layers using contact cement. I put together a couple of stacks of that foam and then I drew on circles to match the diameters of the cylinder. These circles were cut out with a bevel using the bandsaw and an 18 dpi metal cutting blade to get a fairly smooth finish. With all of my beveled circles cut out, I glued them all together using more of that contact cement. This formed the basic shape of the cylinder. Remaining detail pieces were cut out by hand from a piece of six millimeter craft foam. These were super glued into place around the cylinder. These protruding details were then beveled just a little bit on the old disc sander. Then using a Forzner bit, I drilled a hole into the front of the cylinder to accept the barrel PVC pipe. Happy with the placement of that pipe, I super glued it into the cylinder, completing this part of the build. Next, I trimmed my template into pieces to make it easier to build just one part of the gun at a time. The front portion of the gun was cut out from two pieces of laminated 10 millimeter foam. The template was then modified a little bit to accommodate the full diameter of the PVC pipe. This piece was then cut out using the bandsaw. I then had to kind of figure out where the barrel was gonna run through this front portion so I could make room for it. Once I had that figured out, I cut the front part in half and made a little extra room for some of those barrel details, again, using that bandsaw. Next, I used the sanding drum on my rotary tool to carve out a rounded channel where the barrel would eventually rest. Happy with how that channel turned out, I used a bit of super glue and permanently attached the barrel to the front part of the gun. I made sure to rest the two halves of that front portion on other bits of foam to ensure that they remained parallel during the glue up. A bead of hot glue was added to the PVC pipe to take up some of that extra space and to make sure the glue up was nice and solid. Using my template as a guide, I cut out some thinner foam to cover up the barrel where it runs through the gun. With some contact cement, this additional layer was glued into place on both sides of the gun. Next, I got to work on the handle. It was cut from two pieces of 10 millimeter foam and one piece of six millimeter foam all laminated together. This made the entire piece the exact thickness that I wanted. I traced the pattern and then cut it all out again on that handy dandy bandsaw. The trigger guard was cut out right through the side of it. That extra cut was then glued back together with some super glue and then I refined the entire cut using my oscillating spindle sander. You could also get a similar effect with your rotary tool. Finally, it was time to put the two halves of the gun together. So I slathered up all of the adjoining surfaces with contact cement. 
I let them dry for a few minutes and then I oh so carefully smushed them together. With the bulk of the gun roughed out, it was time to start refining some of the details, starting with rounding over the top and bottom of the gun. I eyeballed where the round over should go and then I drew on some guidelines. Once I was happy with the placement, I carved away the bulk of the extra material with a sharp craft knife. The final sculpting was done with the rotary tool on both the top and the bottom of the gun. The next layer of foam detail was going to cover a lot of this front part of the gun, but not all of it, so I used the template to mark out where I wanted the foam not to go. I also took this chance to cut in some of those extra details on the bottom of the gun. These were carefully notched using the bandsaw. The rest of the lines were scored with my craft knife precisely using a straight edge. Then I could hit that whole part with the heat gun, opening up these cuts and score lines to show off off some really clean details. To add that next layer of detail, I marked out where I wanted it to go and then I covered just those spots with contact cement. Then I took a large piece of two millimeter craft foam and covered it completely with contact cement. Once that was all dry, about five minutes later, I laid it over the bottom of the gun, taking my time to press the thin foam over the complex curves. I made sure there was enough foam to overlap all of my layer lines. Then, using my template to kind of rediscover where those lines were under all of that foam, I cut along those lines and removed all of the extra foam to create that next portion of detail. This worked especially well on that detail part on the bottom of the gun. Before adding the next layer of detail on the top of the gun, I refined a couple of the details that would be easier to get at at this stage of the game. Then I did a similar thing on the top of the gun, roughing out the size and shape of the two millimeter craft foam and then covering both surfaces with contact cement. This layer was glued down and again, I used my template to rediscover where the layer lines were supposed to go these details were then cut back into that thin layer of foam until I was happy with the final form. More flat details were cut out from different layers of foam and glued into place. These parts were cut out from the appropriate thickness of foam, details were cut into them, and then they were tacked down using super glue. I also made some score lines on the bottom of the gun and used the heat gun again to open up those details. The hammer was cut from a piece of 10 millimeter foam and then the circles were made by pressing the top of a sanding drum into the side of the hammer. I also refined the profile of the trigger guard by roughing it out with a sharp craft knife and then cleaning up a bit with the rotary tool. Once that was the correct shape, I glued the flat two millimeter detail piece over the trigger guard. The pieces behind the cylinder were made from a couple pieces of six millimeter foam that were cut out and then glued together and then glued into place. Some additional parts on the side of the gun were made by cutting out strips of six millimeter foam and then carving V grooves into the back of those parts. These grooves were then glued together, creating a folded over bevel on the top and bottom of these parts. These pieces were then cut to length and beveled on the bandsaw. Additional details were made using our tried and true scoring and heat gunning method. These finished pieces were then super glued in place on the body of the gun. To get the handle into its proper rounded form, I went hog wild with the rotary tool and a rough sanding bit. I also took the opportunity to round over any areas on the gun where the layers eh, didn't quite match up. Final refining of these roughed up surfaces was done using a stone grinding bit in the rotary tool. This has a more gentle texture to it that leaves the surface a bit smoother than the sanding bit. A couple more pieces of the handle were cut out and beveled with the rotary tool. Once those were finished, they were then glued into place on the top of the handle. Finally, some additional gun parts were cut out of foam and glued in place along the top of the gun, including just some miscellaneous details and the hammer. The very last detail was the tiny sight that goes on the top of the gun. It was made from some thin pieces of foam and then glued into place. Before sealing, I went over the entire gun with a heat gun to smooth out all of the surfaces and sort of singe off any remaining fuzzy bits. To seal the creation, I went with my trusty Plasti Dip. This is a quick and easy way to seal your foam and create a nice smooth surface for adding whatever paint job you intend to add later on. I sprayed on a good five layers of Plasti Dip and then I let it all dry. And that's it. That was the entire build. It was kind of challenging, especially with some of those layers that get wrapped around the barrel part there, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And I hope you guys follow along yourselves. Of course, the free blueprints are linked down below, along with all the tools and materials that I used to put this gun together. Now, all I've got to do is trade my gun with Andrew so that I can paint his next week and he can paint mine. In fact, I'll be right back. So of course that's it. Like I mentioned, it's all made out of styrofoam, so nothing too expensive for you guys to create yourself. Now of course, all that's left to do is hand it over to the duo from Bunnish Props, and they can paint it up. So that way it can look fantastic, and not in its standard styrofoam form. Thanks for watching, guys.
can't wait to see what they painted up like. It's gonna be so badass. Wait, what just happened? This isn't my one. Where did this come from? Ha ha! That was pretty fun. Hey gang, thanks so much for watching the video. Of course, like I said, you really ought to go over and check out the video that Andrew did on his build because I'll be painting that next week. And if you want to see how my gun gets painted, head on over there and subscribe because he'll be doing the painting video for that gun next week. And of course, if you're new to our channel, especially if you're coming on over here from Andrew's channel, then please go ahead and give us a subscribe. Not only will you get to see the painting video for Andrew's gun next week, but of course we've got tons of prop and costume making video content and tutorials coming at you every single week for the foreseeable future. Thank you again so much for watching and we'll see all of you in the next build. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe so you don't miss any of our new weekly prop and costume tutorial videos. For more goodies, head over to our website where you'll find blueprints, tutorial books, articles, and more. We also have a second channel for our Q&A show and extra behind the scenes videos. Thanks again and happy crafting.